Hi, everybody. This is Jerry Gerritsen, Tabia Law. I'm here to be your guide, your partner to the world of immigration law. And uh, please subscribe uh, right up here and uh, like. And uh, go ahead and uh, hit the uh, bell to the notification so you can be notified of uh, the new videos that will come out on a weekly basis. So today we're going to continue our walk through citizenship and this is uh, part two of a multi uh, talk series and i'm happy to walk you guys through the uh, form that you use for uh, the citizenship the n 400 and um, i always uh, let people know that you're not required to have an attorney to use an attorney a lot of these uh, forms can be easily or can be filled out by lay people like you and uh, so feel free to, to do that and I'll help you through it again I'm not representing you here this is just a, a lecture or uh, lessons that I'm given uh, on the internet all right so go ahead and if you're in front of the computer you're going to type in uscis.gov once you do that you'll see the uh, USCIS page come up. Go ahead and hit towards the top citizenship. You'll see topics, forms, newsroom, hit citizenship. Once you hit that, you're going to go ahead and go to apply for citizenship. You see topics. It'll say learn about citizenship and apply for citizenship. Go ahead and apply for citizenship. And then you're going to be going down. You've got a video there. I let you guys go ahead and watch last time. And, um, but we're going to try to get right to the form so I can pick up where I started last time. <coughs> where it says apply for citizenship uh, at the top, you're going to see where it says form in 400. Go ahead and click that. And then on this page, I'm going to go scroll all the way down and you'll see forms and document downloads. I want to click that little uh, arrow down and you'll see the first one down uh, there is forms 400 used with adobe reader and i'm going to go ahead and click that and that's going to take me to the form okay so now we're back to the form this is where we ended our last session part one of uh, citizenship so again at the top you don't fill out that's for the usc is uh, governmental official to fill that out you don't want to touch that uh, you are going to fill out though part one if you have should have an A number. If, you have a, if you're a green card holder now, you should have an A. There are exceptions to a rule, but so go ahead and put your nine digit A number there. And then you're answering these questions here. You are uh, at least 18 years of age and you're either going to click A, B, C, D, or E. Okay, so go through, read each one of those and, and uh, what, whichever one applies to you, go ahead and click that there. Have you been a lawful permanent resident of the United States for at least five years? If yet, if yes, click that there. Have you been a lawful permanent resident for the United States at, for at least three years? In addition, you have been married to and living with the same U.S. citizen spouse for the last three years, and your spouse has been a U.S. citizen for the last three years at a time which you filed the form for uh, in 400. So here, here you are here. You can expedite your citizenship. So if this is your sec, uh, situation, then basically you're looking at getting your citizenship three years after your LPR, after your green card. So this is a way to expedite, uh, move uh, move forward quicker if you're married to a U.S. citizen. Okay, let's go ahead and go to part two, information about you. So you're just filling out your name. Uh, now, this is important. You want to get uh, it's your given name so if you've changed your name over the uh, years that's not where you want to put it here you want to do your given name the, the one that you were born with okay your last first and middle name now there'll be other places where you can put in aliases or other names that, uh, if you've changed your name but that's not the section here this is where you're putting your birth name the name that you're going to be showing on your birth certificate. And that's important because if you put a different name here and then your birth certificate says something else, 
you're going to get what you call an RFE, a request for evidence from the USCIS. And they're going to say, what's the discrepancy? Which is it, right? And you don't, it's just going to slow down the process. You're going to have to re, uh, re, uh, reply and answer the question. And it's just, you don't want to do that. Um, okay. And then also uh, your name exactly as is, appears on your permanent resident card. Now it may be different if you change your name. So anyways, so you'll fill that out and then go to, let me see, we're still in part two I'm on the second page. Now, of course you got a 20 page uh, application here. You're going to be sending in application plus supporting evidence like your birth certificate and other items that they ask for. Okay. So uh, again, you're, you're putting in your A number um, and then uh, other names you have used since birth. Okay. This is where you put your aliases and your other names. Okay. If you change your names, okay. Including nicknames, aliases, and maiden names if applicable. Okay. Um, all right, so name change. This here, you're, uh, it's asking you, would you like to legally change your name? And so here's an opportunity for you to change your name. <laughs> uh, so you go ahead and yes or no. And if you do, then you're going to uh, be putting down the new name that you would like to have. Okay, next section is uh, five. You're, U.S. Social Security number, if you have one. And then your USCIS online account number. And that's, this is if you uh, go to the USCIS site and you've um, made your own account, but you can. In fact, um, I believe you can file these uh, in 400s online. I'm not 100% sure because uh, they, they, they keep on adding some um, new technology. But if that's the case, then you would uh, want to sign up and then have your own account. And then you can submit this via. And so instead of printing it out and sending in a, a paper version through the mail, you can print or you can do it online. OK, and then you have your uh, biometrics. You got your gender, your date of birth the date you became a lawful permanent resident, make sure that's accurate because they'll, they'll be looking at your green card. And if it's a different date here than it is on your card, then that's, uh, that could be, uh, an RFE and you don't want that. You don't want to slow down the process. You want to move forward, uh, country of birth, country of citizenship or nationality. Do you have a physical or developmental disability or mental impairment that prevents you from demonstrating your knowledge and understanding of the English language or civics requirement for naturalization? Yes or no? So uh, um, I'll go ahead and we'll answer this. We'll be done with this with this uh, series, lecture for today. But uh, the reason it's asking you this is because when you go on your civ uh, citizenship interview, you're going to have uh, a couple of exams. The first exam is language and can you speak English well enough uh, for the U USCIS officer to, to pass you on that. You don't have to speak perfect language, but you need to speak uh, the language uh, English good enough um, to uh, have a USCIS officer pass you along and, and allow you to go ahead and get your citizenship. The other test is a civics test. You're going to have to um, know um, about this country and be able to answer questions. And of course, uh, these are things that you can go online and find uh, lots of helps. And uh, there's uh, books written on this. And so there's, there's uh, ways for you to, uh, if you're not already there, educate yourself so that you can make sure you can pass that exam. So, and it's not a major, you got 10 questions or something like that. And, if you get six out of 10, I think a year ago, <laughs> um, don't quote me on that. Uh, but so those are going to be at your interview, you, a couple of the little uh, exams, tests, and, and they do it right there. You, you come in, you sit down, you start talking, either you by yourself or your lawyer, your attorney can come with you. That's one of the benefits of having an attorney. If nothing else, they make you feel uh, more confident 
Um, you can't have family members. So it's either you alone or an attorney. And uh, so um, those are two items that you need to start thinking about and start preparing yourself for your English language skills in the civics test. Anyway, so, but if you have some kind of a developmental disability, uh, some issues, uh, then you click yes on this and there could be accommodations or there will be accommodations for you knowing that um, there are issues um, developmentally so that you're, they're not quite competent to, to pass a civics test or uh, the language. And so there's, there's um, going to be uh, uh, ways for the government to assist you in that so that you can still go ahead and become a, a U.S. citizen. Okay, that's it for today. Uh, let me remind you to go ahead and um, <clears throat> subscribe, please, and uh, hit that little bell with a notification so you can be notified of the next um, lecture coming up. And also, uh, you can like it if you like it. And I'm hoping you like uh, this video. And uh, anyways, that's it. Let me go ahead and read my uh, scripture for the day. We have Genesis 128. It says, And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Okay, you have a good day and we'll see you guys next time.